The determination of output is the fundamental issue of macroeconomics. Output is always determined by the condition that supply equals demand. In the short run, year to year, we assume that firms are willing to supply any quantity at a given price. Production automatically adjusts to changes in demand. Thus, in the short run, output is effectively determined by demand. In the medium run, 5 to 10 years, supply determines output. So, amount of saving, investment, capital, and technology determine output. In the long run, over decades, growth in saving, investment, and technological change determine output. In this chapter, we focus on understanding the key components of demand and the interactions among production, income, and demand. Chapter 3 Outline The Goods Market 3-1 The Composition of GDP 3-2 The Demand for Goods 3-3 The Determination of Equilibrium Output 3-4 Investment Equals Saving an alternative way of thinking about goods market equilibrium. 3-5. Is the government omnipotent? A warning. Learning objectives. 1. Demonstrate understanding of how interactions among production, income and demand determine economic activity in the short run. Production depends on demand. Demand depends on income. Income depends on production. 2. Know the major components of demand and the relative size of each component. 3. Explain the characteristics of the consumption function. Learning objectives continued. Discuss and explain what is meant by equilibrium output. 5. Know the difference between autonomous spending and the other components of spending that depend on income. 6. Recognize that models have three equations, behavioral equations, equilibrium conditions, and identities. Interactions among aggregate production, income, and demand. Suppose the economy is in equilibrium. Thus, there is no pressure on output to change. Now, if demand increases at each level of output, say due to increase in government spending, firms respond to this increase by increasing production without any change in prices. This leads to an increase in income since income is always equal to production. Increase in income will lead to further increase in demand and production. This process will continue till a new equilibrium output is reached. The goods market. When economists think about year-to-year -year movements in economic activity, they focus on the interactions among production, income, and demand. Changes in the demand for goods lead to changes in production. Changes in production lead to changes in income. Changes in income lead to changes in the demand for goods. The composition of GDP. Consumption C represents spending on final goods and services by consumers such as clothing, restaurant meals, and haircuts. Investment I represents fixed investment spending on non-residential and residential buildings and equipment such as a company building a factory or buying a machine. Government spending G represents purchases of goods and services by the federal, state, and local governments, such as government spending on roads, bridges, consultants, teachers, excluding government transfers, such as welfare payments, or spending on social security. The composition of GDP continued. Exports X represent purchases of U.S. goods and services by foreigners, such as foreigners spending money at Disney World in Florida or buying a car made in the U.S. Imports IM represent purchases of foreign goods and services by U.S. consumers, firms, and the U.S. government, such as clothing made in China, machines made in Germany, or Americans spending money on foreign travel. Net exports or trade balance is given by X minus IM. If exports are greater than imports, then there is a trade surplus. If imports are greater than exports, then there is a trade deficit. Inventory investment is the difference between production and sales. It is added to fixed investment to get the figure of actual investment as opposed to planned investment. The composition of U.S. GDP in 2014, as shown in Table 3.1, reveals 1. Consumption C is the largest component of GDPY, accounting for over 68%. 2. 
government spending G accounted for 18.1% of GDP. 3. Investment I accounted for 16% of GDP. 4. Net exports X minus IM accounted for minus 3.1% of GDP. The demand for goods Z equals C plus I plus G plus X minus IM. The above identity defines the total demand for goods Z as consumption plus investment plus government spending plus exports minus imports. In a closed economy, X equals IM equals zero, so Z equals C plus I plus G. Consumption C is a function of disposable income YD, which is the income that remains once consumers have received government transfers and paid their taxes. Equation 3.1, C equals CYD, is a behavioral equation that captures the behavior of consumers. Equation 3.1 says that consumption depends on disposable income. The plus sign below indicates consumption varies positively with disposable income. CYD is called the consumption function. Disposable income is equal to Y minus T, where Y represents income and T represents net taxes, that is, taxes minus transfers. Equation 3.2, C equals C0 plus C1YD says, 1. Consumption is a linear function of disposable income. 2. The slope of the curve is given by C1. 3. C1 is the marginal propensity to consume. It is assumed that C1 lies between 0 and 1 because people tend to spend part but not all of the extra disposable income. 4. C0 represents autonomous consumption that does not depend on disposable income. 5. C0 is what people would consume if their disposable income equals 0. And 6. Changes in C0 reflect changes in consumption for a given level of disposable income. The consumption function, an example. Suppose C equals 200 plus 0.75 YD. What is the value of autonomous consumption? That is, what is C when YD equals 0? Answer, autonomous consumption equals 200. What is the marginal propensity to consume? MPC. Answer, MPC equals 0.75. If disposable income increases by 100, by how much will C change? Answer, C will change by 75 when disposable income changes by 100. The consumption function is illustrated in figure 3-1. Consumption increases with disposable income but less than 1 for 1. The slope of the consumption function is less than 1. The vertical intercept is determined by the value of autonomous consumption C0. A lower value of C0 will shift the consumption function down. A higher value will shift the consumption function up. If MPC changes, it will change the slope of the curve making it steeper or flatter. Equation 3.3 rewrites the consumption function by substituting y minus t for yd. So it becomes c equals c0 plus c1 times y minus t. Endogenous and exogenous variables in our models. Endogenous variables are variables that depend on other variables in the model. Exogenous variables are variables not explained within the model, but are instead taken as given. I equals I bar. A bar on investment means investment is taken as given. Equation 3.4 states that investment is assumed to be given in our model, hence it is an exogenous variable. Y and C in our model depend on other variable and hence are endogenous variables. T and G describe fiscal policy, the choice of taxes and spending by the government. G and T are exogenous because governments do not behave with the same regularity as consumers or firms. This book will typically treat G and T as variables chosen by the government and will not try to explain them within the model. The determination of equilibrium output. 
In equation 3.5, demand is represented by Z. The four components of demand are C plus I plus G plus X minus IM. In our simple model, net exports X minus IM are assumed to be zero. Inventory investment is also zero. G and T are determined by the government. Y represents output, production, and income. Equation 3.6 says, in short-run equilibrium, output is determined by demand, so y equals z. This is an equilibrium condition. Substituting equation 3.5 in equation 3.6 gives us equation 3.7. y equals c0 plus c1 times y minus t plus i plus g. In equilibrium, production y is equal to demand z which in turn depends on income y, which is itself equal to production. Solve for equilibrium y by taking all y terms on one side. y minus c1y equals c0 minus c1t plus i plus g. Write y as a function of the exogenous variables. This can be written as 1 minus c1 times y equals c0 minus c1t plus i plus g. Now divide both sides by 1 minus c1. Equation 3.8 gives us the value of equilibrium output slash income. Equilibrium income is the product of two factors, autonomous spending, the second term in brackets, and a multiplier. The value of the multiplier depends on the value of marginal propensity to consume. The multiplier arises because consumption is affected by income. Suppose there is an increase in G, it will lead to increase in production. This will lead to increase in income, which will lead to increase in consumption. This will lead to increase in production, income and consumption, and so on. Multiplier catches this effect. Important note, the equation for equilibrium output y equals multiplier times autonomous spending. Multiplier is the multiple by which equilibrium income will change for a $1 change in autonomous spending. Autonomous spending is given by the term C0 plus I bar plus G minus C1T. The term 1 over 1 minus C1 is the multiplier. It is larger when C1 is closer to 1. Example, if C1 equals 0.6, the multiplier equals 1 over 1 minus 0 0.6 equal 2.5, meaning that an increase on consumption by $1 billion will increase output by 2.5 times 1 billion equals $2.5 billion. Find what is the multiplier if C1 is 0 0.8. However, a $1 decrease in taxes will increase equilibrium income by C1 times 1 over 1 minus C1. Tax multiplier is smaller than government spending multiplier. Autonomous spending is positive when T equals G, balanced budget situation, and C1 is between 0 and 1, then G minus C1T is positive, and so is autonomous spending. Balanced budget multiplier is 1. Macroeconomists always use three tools. One, algebra to make sure that the logic is correct. Two, graphs to build the intuition. Three, words to explain the results. Example, the determination of equilibrium output. Suppose Z equals C plus I plus G. C equals 300 plus 0.9 YD. T equals 1,000, YD equals Y minus T, G equals 2,000, I equals 200. Solution. Determination of equilibrium output. Starting with the equation Z equals C plus I plus G and substituting the information given, Z equals 300 plus 0.9 Y minus T plus 200 plus 2,000 equals 300 plus 0.9 y minus 1000 plus 200 plus 2000 equals 2500 plus 0.9 y minus 900 equals 1600 plus 0.9 y. 
solution equilibrium level of output z equals 1600 plus 0.9 y in equilibrium y equals z so substitute y for z y equals 1600 plus 0.9 y y minus 0.9 y equals 1600 y times 1 minus 0.9 equals 1600 0.1 y equals 1600 y equals 1600 divided by 0.1 equals 16,000. Solution. Consumption at equilibrium level of output. Equilibrium level of output y equals 16,000. y d equals y minus t equals 16,000 minus 1,000 equals 15,000. c equals 300 plus 0.9 y d equals 300 plus 0.9 times 15,000 equals 300 plus 13,500 equals 13,800. Solution. Savings at equilibrium level of output. S equals YD minus C equals 15,000 minus 13,800 equals 1,200. Solution. Effect of change in autonomous saving on equilibrium output. If autonomous saving increases by 100, then autonomous consumption falls by 100. Multiplier equals 1 over 1 minus C1 equals 1 over 1 minus 0.9 equals 1 over 0.1 equals 10. Change in equilibrium output. Change in Y equals multiplier times change in C0 equals 10 times minus 100 equals minus 1000. Solution. New equilibrium values. New equilibrium output y equals 15,000. New disposable income equals 15,000 minus 1,000 equals 14,000. New consumption c equals 200 plus 0.9 times 14,000 equals 200 plus 12,600 equals 12,800. New saving s equals 14,000 minus 12,800 equal 1200. Note, new saving figure is the same as before. Shows paradox of thrift. Increase in autonomous savings leads to saving returning to its original level in equilibrium output slash income. The determination of equilibrium output. Steps to characterize the equilibrium graphically. 1. Plot production as a function of income. Because production equals income, their relation is the 45 degree line. 2. Plot demand as a function of income. Z equals C0 plus I bar plus G minus C1T plus C1 times Y. 3. In equilibrium, production Y equals demand Z. Figure 3-2 shows equilibrium output is determined by the condition that production be equal to demand. Demand curve plots demand as a function of income. Z equals C0 plus I bar plus G minus C1T plus C1Y. Demand depends on autonomous spending and on income. The 45 degree line plots production as a function of income since by definition production equals income. Equilibrium condition is that production should be equal to demand or Y equals Z. Graphically, it is given by the intersection of the demand curve and the production line at point A. Figure 3-3 shows that an increase in autonomous spending has a more than one for one effect on equilibrium output because of the working of the multiplier. Suppose government spending increases autonomously. ZZ curve shifts to ZZ prime. Equilibrium output goes from Y to Y prime. Steps. Distance AB shows first round increase in production. BC, first round increase in income. CD, second round increase in demand. DE, second round increase in production and income. The total increase in production after N plus 1 rounds, 1 plus C1 plus C1 squared and so on plus C1N, which is a geometric series with a limit of 1 over 1 minus C1. To summarize our findings using words, 
Production depends on demand, which depends on income, which is itself equal to production. An increase in demand leads to an increase in production and income, which in turn leads to a further increase in demand. The increase in equilibrium output is larger than the initial shift in demand by a factor equal to the multiplier. The multiplier depends on the propensity to consume, which can be estimated using econometrics, the set of statistical methods used in economics. The adjustment of output over time is called the dynamics of adjustment. How long the adjustment takes depends on how and when firms revise their production schedule. Focus. The Lehman bankruptcy, fears of another Great Depression, and shifts in the consumption function. When people start worrying about the future, they decide to save more, even if their current income has not changed. News about Lehman Brothers going bankrupt in September 2008 reminded people of the Great Depression as confirmed by the number of searches for Great Depression in Google. Consumption fell even if disposable income had not yet changed. Focus. The Lehman bankruptcy, fears of another Great Depression, and shifts in the consumption function is represented in Figure 1, which shows the behavior of disposable income, consumption, and consumption of durable goods from 2008 Quarter 1 to 2009 Quarter 3. Investment equals saving, an alternative way of thinking about goods market equilibrium. John Maynard Keynes articulated an alternative model that focuses instead on investment and saving in his book, The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money, in 1936. To understand the investment equals saving equilibrium condition, start by understanding the definition of private saving and public saving. Private saving S is equal to disposable income YD minus consumption spending C or Y minus T minus C. Public saving equals T minus G, where T equals taxes minus transfers. If T is greater than G, public saving is positive and there is a budget surplus. If T is less than G, public saving is negative and there is a budget deficit. Equation 3.10, I equals S plus T minus G, gives us another way of thinking about equilibrium in the goods market. It says that equilibrium in the goods market requires that investment equals saving, the sum of private and public saving. This is why the equilibrium condition in the goods market is called the IS relation, which stands for investment equals saving. What firms want to invest, I, must be equal to what people and government want to save, S plus T minus G. Two equivalent ways of stating the condition for equilibrium in the goods market. Production equals demand. Investment equals saving. Equation 3.11, S equals minus C0 plus 1 minus C1 times Y minus T is the behavioral equation showing the saving function. Savings are negative minus C0 when disposable income Y minus T is 0. Slope of the saving function is given by 1 minus C1, which is equal to the marginal propensity to save, MPS. Marginal propensity to save lies between 0 and 1. Marginal propensity to consume, MPC, plus marginal propensity to save, MPS, equals 1. MPC plus MPS equals 1. Substituting the saving function in the IS relation and solving for Y gives us equation 3.12. The equilibrium value of Y obtained here is exactly the same as the one we got by using the production equal demand or y equals z equation. Using the IS relation, we can illustrate the paradox of saving once again. If consumers decide to save more and hence consume less at each level of disposable income, autonomous consumption C0 decreases. Equation 3.12 for equilibrium income implies that income will decline by a multiple of that fall. In equilibrium, Saving will return to the original level or stay unchanged at the previous level C0 
since i g and t have not changed by assumption so s must remain unchanged because equation 3.10 implies that i equals s plus t minus g is the government omnipotent a warning equation 3.8 implies that the government can choose the level of g or t to affect the level of output it wants however there are many aspects of reality that we have not incorporated in our model changing g or t is not easy investment and imports may change making it hard for governments to assess the effects of their policies discussed in chapters 5 9 and 18 to 20. expectations are likely to matter chapters 14 to 16. the effects on output may be unsustainable in the medium run chapter 9. cutting t or increasing g can lead to large budget deficits and public debt in the long run chapters 9 11 16 and 22.